A story about the uh, number book, the uh, OA officers had got removed before the booking. So, uh, I'm not sure whether we will get chased out or not later. Maybe we need to change. I'm not sure, but I'm asking her to help to check. Uh, if there's anyone using this class. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, welcome back from the lunch. Uh, good afternoon. We got a good news. <laughs> Malaysia got a new prime minister. Okay, finally. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, and then. Okay, a few things to discuss before before we start the new lecture. So just now I we talked about the relation. Is it okay with me sitting here? Can I sit here? Can I sit here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so no. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay. So, okay. You, if you want to see my face, you just call me. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So relation that is not both symmetry and anti-symmetry. We said that this R one is not symmetry and not anti-symmetry because, uh, one tree will break the symmetry because if one tree is in the relation, tree one supposed to be in there, but tree one is not in there. And then it also break the anti-symmetric law because if one two is in there and two one is in there, but e one is not equal to two. Okay, so this one is not symmetric and anti-symmetric. But just now we also talked about this is not uh symmetry and anti-symmetric, but in fact actually this is uh not symmetric but anti-symmetric. Okay, why? Because, because the, to check to check anti-symmetric, you need to have the condition that A, B, and uh, B, A, maybe A, B, B, A is in the relation, then A equal to B, okay? But, but there's no, no A, B, and B, A in your set that satisfy this property here. So this, this hypothesis here is uh, false. Okay. So false implies everything. So this sentence here is uh, true. Okay. So it's uh, vacuously true. So vacuously true. So vacuously true. Because there's nothing to check. Okay. So I give you three examples. One is symmetry and anti not uh and anti-symmetric. One is not and not symmetric and not anti-symmetric. And then third one is not symmetric but anti-symmetric. Okay. Okay. Uh any question on this part here? Any question? Okay, one more thing is uh, some of you asked, maybe you already tried the question. <clears throat> I proof, I proof, I put some proof question in the tutorial question last time. Is it this week or which week? Let's see. Uh, why do I put there? Uh, I think this question is fun. 
because it says that the relation is empty set. Okay. So how is it a relation and empty set? Right. So this question is say show that the relation equal to empty set on a non-empty set X is symmetric transitive but not reflexive. Okay. So why relation can be an empty set? What's a relation? It's a subset. But you know that empty set is always a subset of all the set, right? Okay, so this define a relation. So now you need to show that it is symmetric, transitive, but not reflexive. Okay. I would say that to show that symmetric and transitive is the same logical idea what we did just now. Okay. So for example, okay, you want to show that it is symmetric, right? So what's the definition of symmetric? For every A, B in your set, if A, B is in X, uh, R, then B, A is in R. What is R? Yeah, 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 right? R is relation, but in this case, relation is what? Empty set, right? So something is in the empty set. False. Okay, so false implies true. Okay, backwardsly true. Okay, so this one is always false. So this sentence, this whole, so, so it is backwardsly true. Okay, so similarly for transitive. Okay, how about reflexive? Okay, I will say similar for transitive. To transitive. Okay, all mixed already. Sorry, no place. Okay, maybe I build a new. How about reflexive? Reflexive is for every a in x, a a is in r. What is your r? Empty set. So something is in the empty set. False. Okay, so the whole thing is false. And it is not reflexive. Okay. Is it clear? Clear. Okay. Okay. It's false. Because uh, empty set has no elements. Yeah. Anyone got any question? No. Let you think a bit. Let me see what people link reply. Here. Is it okay? Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, someone's supposed to use this class later, but got a uh, change, so we'll be using it until you find hopefully. Okay, so any more question? Any more question? Any more other question? Yeah, what? Yeah, tutorial, which question? Nine point one point six G. Nine point one point six G. G. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about this function? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. one, yep. Yeah, as long as your s is equal to one, then one pair up with any y will be in the relation. Yeah, like one, two, one, three, one, four, one, anything is in the relation. So, mm. x can only be one. 
Yeah. S can only be one, but Y can be anything. Huh? You can put any Y, yes. Yeah. What if I put Y as one? Yeah. yeah. One one is in there. One one is in there. Because S is equal to one. It's in the relation. Yeah. Oh, but it doesn't satisfy that all mm -hmm. these numbers. Uh, it's in the set of three numbers. Yeah, and then? So it's not reflective or symmetric. It's not reflective or Yes, because all the, you need to check it on all the elements in your set. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so if your set just containing one, the singleton one, then it is reflexive. Okay. Yeah. So it depends on your set. All right. Okay. Any other question? Any other question? Hmm? Okay. All good. All good. Repeat. Mm -hmm. The proof just now? The proof just now, which part? Which part you want to repeat? Just pick one up. Symmetry, huh? Okay. Where is it? What's the question? Okay. Okay, yeah. okay, so to prove symmetry, the definition is for every element in your set, okay, A and B element in your set, if AB is in your relation, then BA is also in your relation, okay? So what is your relation? Your relation is a what? empty set, okay? So does Empty set contain anything? No. So this statement is false. Okay. So false implies everything. If false, then everything. Uh, false can imply false, and false can imply true. This one is propositional logic. Propositional logic. If P implies Q. If uh, If P implies in P, then Q. If P false, then false implies true, false also implies false. So everything is true. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this one is a quite, um, how to say, quite common trick. It's a common trick. Okay. Common trick for the sleep then uh, property. Okay. Same. Try to work out yourself. It's the same. Okay. It's the same principle. Write down the definition and then see why the assumption is false and then false by it. Okay. Similar. Whenever I say similar, right? Similar here. Whenever you see similar, you should use the same principle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Okay. I think we should start. Any more questions should leave to the next part. Okay, we should start the new chapter today. I want to warn you that this uh, lecture may be a bit boring because all of them are introducing new terminology as just as like what we did for every new chapter, and then we will increase the difficulty level of difficulties. So this week we only introduce few new term terminology first, and then next week we'll do something uh, interesting with the uh, objects. Okay. So what we will do today is graph and tree. 
So we start a new topic now. Graph and tree. Hey, sometimes you'll see some like break the break dot here because I'm like charging my iPad. So there's some thing with the magnet. So <clears throat> It is uh, chapter 10 and 11 in your textbook, if you want to refer. So the graph we are talking about here is not this kind of function graph, okay? Not this kind of graph. But you can think of the stars in the skies, okay? The constellation. So you got star in the sky, okay? And then you can link them together to form some, uh, I'm not sure it's meaningful or not, but maybe beautiful pattern diagram. Okay. So this is the graph we were talking about. Okay, so there are vertexes and uh, edges. Okay. Sometimes we also can put direction to this arrow. So signal like, for example, all the water will flow into this sink point. Okay. So all water will flow into the sink. Okay. Yeah, this is the graph we will talk about in this uh, topic. This topic is quite long, about three weeks. It's as long as the propositional logic. And this is the second last topic. After this, we left with the last topic and then will set for finals and then holiday. Okay. So, so let's give the definition of a graph. So we learned about set theory, right? Now graph consists of two sets. Okay. When we talk about graph, you need to give me two sets. One is a set of uh, vertexes which we call V, capital V. Okay, see, coming again. Like this. Of uh, vertexes. And then second, uh, the set of edges. Vertexes and edges. Okay. So, each x, uh, each edge, and I try not charging it. See, it can last for three hours. Or not. Okay, so each edge has either one or two vertexes okay, attached, attached to it, which we call the endpoint. Okay, make sense or not? Endpoint of the edges. Endpoint. Okay. So we will denote the edge U, the edge, uh, denote the edge UB connecting uh, vertexes, the vertexes, the vertexes U and V. Okay. Okay, so let's see some example, okay? So for example, for example, we got this, uh, I call it an A2 graph, A2 cleaver or A2 graph, okay? We got UV vertexes, and then this edge we'll call it bracket UV, okay? Why would I use bracket? Uh, why I use set, you know? There's no order, okay? I just want UV uh, connected, okay? And then, uh, what else? So, in the definition, say, the edge has either one or two vertexes associated to it, okay? In this case, associated to this edge got two vertexes, right? So, how, when is the case? What do you think, when is the case there's only one vertex that attached to it? Huh? What? Start the start. You mean like 
first edge like this. Huh? At least. Huh? Uh, this is not a graph because this edge is not connected to anything. Okay. So every the end point of the edge must be a vertex. Okay. So this is, is not a graph. Huh? So how is it possible that an edge there's only one vertex attached to it? Huh? Okay, a circle. Someone draw a circle. Okay. So there's a loop. Okay. A loop. So this edge will be called V. Okay, a loop. Remember just now we saw it in the Hessel diagram. There's a loop reflexive uh, property. Okay. So the loop. Uh okay. So that's all for this one. So <clears throat> so we have a remark. So the remark is if if the set of uh, vertex is infinity or the edge is infinity, then G is an infinite graph. Yeah. If both of them are finite, then G is a finite graph. Remember this uh, double line is the uh, cardinality of set, right? Okay. Then G is a finite graph. So in this uh, course, we mostly only deal with a finite graph. I mean, I think only finite graph, not infinite graph. Okay. So what's the loop? So let's make it precise. And uh, H that connect a vertex to itself is called a loop. And then, like what I did uh, at the start, we can put the edge with direction. So an edge with a di with direction is called directed graph. Uh, direct directed edge. Yeah, you got a direction. You want to go from U to V or go from V to U. So, similarly, we can build the definition of a directed graph. Okay. So, directed graph also consists of two data. So, you need to tell me the set of vertexes. Set B of vertexes. And you need to tell me the set of directed edges now. Okay. So these edges have to be directed in contrast to the before one. So the direct the directed edges we will write edges we will write uh, we will denote will be denoted as the ordered pair UV. Okay. So meaning meaning how should I say? Meaning, we should know the meaning the start of UV is U and uh, the end of UV is B. Okay, so for example, like going from U to V. Okay, the direction is going from U to V, and then this is called U V. Okay. Then U is called the then U is called the I think we encounter it just now. Initial. Okay. Remember the bus initial vertex and stop at the terminal vertex. Okay. The terminal vertex. Okay, this one is for direction. And uh, you can also put a lot of edges between them. Okay, so maybe there are multiple of them. Okay. So for this purpose, we can just write five there. Okay, so what is this? This is called the multiplicity of, uh, of an edge. So 
we say that UV or uh, whether it is directed or undirected, undirected or directed is of uh, edge, uh, sorry, is an edge of multiplicity M, multiplicity M if they are M, uh, okay, put a bracket, directed edge connecting uh, connecting u and v okay so you can sometimes you can put numbers on the edges to say that how many edge uh, how many same kind of edge going through u and v okay that's all this is some yeah non-directed non-directed this is the non-directed one. Ah, this is no direction, right? This arrow has no direction. But directed will be something like something like this. Okay. I also can have arrow going back, going forth, going back. Right? So I can write it as uh going forward got how many? Got two. And then going back got how many? Also got two. What do you mean? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, without the end row, yeah, 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 yeah. Undirected, right? Yeah, directed, yeah. yeah. ED is like with, with, so with direction, yeah, with direction, directed. Yeah, this third, third is close to Chinese, right? Third. Uh, directed third edge. You know, and us. I mean, third, I mean, this third, ma. Yeah. Third. So, wow. yeah. Right? Similar logic, ma. Okay. Okay. So, you say ED is, uh, this is the adjective. What? <laughs> Sorry, no, next. Time. no time in English. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. So, okay, next. So, what's next? The next. Okay, next we will introduce a few kinds of graph. Okay. We got a simple graph. One, we got a simple graph. Two, we got a multi graph, and then three, we got a pseudo graph, and then four, we got a simple directed graph, and then five, we got a directed multi graph. Okay, so. How to differentiate them again? Okay. So we will look at the edges, whether they are directed or not, or undirected. Or if there are multiple edges going through the same pair of vertexes, okay, or there are loops inside the graph. Okay. So simple first, simple, right? So simple should be undirected. So no multiple edge, no loops. So, for example, simple curve will be something like this. Okay, simple. Multi graph is still undirected, but we can include multiple edge. Okay, and no loops. Okay, wonder you guys see uh, how many of you done chemistry before. So you can draw like a double bond between two atom right okay so multiple x okay pseudo graph is uh, undirected uh allow multiple x 
and a lot loops. OK, so you can like. Put another loop. On one side. OK, pseudo graph. Yeah, so next is simple directed graph. It's simple graph, but it's directed. So we got direct direction on the edge. OK, directed graph. And then no multiple edges, no loops. Okay, so maybe we can uh, get this guy again, and then just put direction on it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is a sink point. Okay. From everywhere, the water flow into it. Directed multi graph. Okay. So directed multi graph is a bit different from the uh, multi graph. So first is directed. And then it is uh, multiple edges, and then we allow loops. Okay. I'm not sure this is the convention used in the book, or I choose one. I think the previous lecture also should mention. So maybe we can put some direction on the. Okay. Yep. So say again. Yeah. Is there a direction? Maybe. Uh -huh. You mean just for this one? Or this one? Yeah, for direction, you can put any direction you want. Can, can. Any direction you can put. Any direction you can put. There's no condition on the direction. Okay? No condition. Depend on what you want. Okay. Okay, let's bring something. Oh. Okay, let's uh, erase this. So uh, these are some examples of graph. So first graph is the acquaintanceship graph. It's like a friendship graph. So if you know the person, then we will draw a line between you and the other person. Okay. So acquaintanceship graph. So there's no direction here, right? So if you are friend with the person, the person should be a friend with you. Is that true? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, let's don't let's don't go too into that topic first. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then uh, next one is an influence graph. Okay. So if Linda is influenced by Brian, then there's a direction from Brian to Linda. And then you can you can see that hey, the influence is going both way. Okay. So maybe Brian is influenced by Yvonne and then Yvonne is influenced by Brian. Okay. And then the next one is a computer network diagnostic link. Anyone know what is this? I also don't know. Okay. <laughs> so maybe it's like checking whether the computer is working or not. I'm also not sure. But so this is a uh, computer between different cities. Okay. So you can check yourself or other city can check you. Okay. Yeah, these are just some, uh, some example of graph. So this is like a simple graph, right? And then this is the simple uh, directed graph. And then this one have multiple edges. Oh, this is this one got multiple edges. So this one is the directed multi graph. And then this one also have multiple edges. Also got loop. So this is a pseudo graph. Maybe I just write it down. This one is pseudo. This is pseudo graph. Uh, this one is simple, right? Yeah, this is a simple graph. This is the multi director multi. Uh, in this course, we mostly deal with simple graph. Very simple one, just simple. I mean, there might be some uh, multi graph or pseudo graph as well. But yeah, 
mostly simple. Okay. Uh, next. Okay. Now uh, we want to investigate the locally what's the information inside the graph. Okay. You need to imagine yourself standing on one vertex. Okay. So if you imagine yourself standing on one vertex, who are your neighbors? Okay. Those are neighbor to you only when you are connected with one edge. Okay. If you are not connected, then you are not neighbor to each other. So two vertex are called adjacent. Okay. Adjacent is like sitting at the side, adjacent to you. All neighbor in G is U and V are endpoints of an edge. Okay. Only when you are connected with an edge, you are neighbor or adjacent to each other. And then another word you need to know. Okay, one is you need to know adjacent. Second, you need to know what's incident. So in this case, the edge is called incident. Incident with the vertex U and V. Okay, vertexes U and V. Okay. So E connects. E connects U and V. Okay. So this two word is uh, quite important. Later we will revisit this with uh, different tools. Okay. So adjacent is between. So adjacent is between vertexes. Okay. So let me label them. So okay, label like this. So <coughs> U and V adjacent. Okay. So E is incident. Okay, adjacent talking about vertexes, incident talking about edge and vertex. Okay, so okay, so next, so uh, so if we consider all your neighbors, they form a set. Okay, then we call you. Anyone want to guess what's the name of this set? If you look at all your neighbors. Anyone want to guess? All your neighbors sit in where? Live in where? Huh? Live in the same tamas. <laughs> live in uh, live in where? Same kampong. So live in the same? Huh? Yes, neighborhood. Yes. So the set of all the neighbors of a vertex is called a neighborhood of the vertex. Yes, very good. Yes. Okay. So if you consider all your neighbors, they are the neighborhood. Okay. And then uh, we also can consider few uh, vertexes together and then we look at the neighborhood. Okay. And uh, we did not the subset of uh, your vertex, okay? the neighborhood of the subset to be the set of all vertexes that is, that are in G, that are adjacent to at least one of them. Okay? To at least one vertex. In A. Okay. So NA is equal to the union of uh, the neighborhood of a single vertex. Okay, let's look at some examples. Examples should make this clear. Let me bring something up again. Get this kind of okay. Let me erase, erase. Okay, so who is the neighbor of Amy? Who is the neighbor of Amy? Who is the neighbor of Amy? Huh? 
zoom in. Oh, too small. Okay, let me zoom this one. Okay, no, no, no. Who is the wait? Let me zoom this one in. Size. Can see a lot. So who is the uh, who is the neighborhood of Amy? Neighborhood of Amy. Yeah. So who are in the neighborhood of Amy? Who are the neighbors of Amy? Hola. Huh? Oh. Please stay. Okay. That's all. So how about? The neighborhood of uh, Amy and Lila. Huh? Lila. Huh? Uh, who? Paula and Liz. Okay. Who else? Who else? Huh? No. We have to at least at least neighbor to at least one of them, not both of them. Yeah. So talk also included. Huh? Steve. Because at least one. Yeah. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. Right? To at least one of them. See the definition? At least one of them. Yeah, not both of them. At least one is enough. Okay. Who else? Jane, Jane, Joe, and Joe. Okay. So these are the neighborhood of Lila and Amy. Okay. So when you consider a neighborhood, it will get growing, growing big, growing bigger. Okay. So this is the neighborhood. So in this case, uh, we come up with another notion on edges. So when you consider neighborhood, right, they must be connected by an edge. So now we define a degree of a vertex. So a degree of a vertex uh, is a, a, vert, a degree of a vertex is the number of edges that is incident with it. Yeah. So the number of edges that connected to it. Except that loop we will count twice. Okay. We will count two for a loop. Because loop come out from an edge uh, from a vertex and then go back to a vertex. In views. To the degree of that vertex. Yeah. So we denote it by D E G D yeah. of vertex. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's see one example. Let me see. <clears throat> okay. So, let's see. What's the degree of F? Huh? What's the degree of F? This is, what is the degree of F? I cannot see it. Okay. Hey, Liang Xiao is here. Liang Xiao is here. Not here. Where? Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> the guy always with head down. Okay. Nice. Can you see it? Uh, let me move something down. Okay, so what's the degree of F? 
four. Uh, why? Because you got one, one, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four. Okay. H that is uh, incident to it. Uh, let's do one uh, fun uh, experiment. So what's the neighborhood of F? A, B, C, E. Okay. And then what's the cardinality of the neighborhood of F? For which is equal to the degree of F. Okay. Okay. How about H? What's the degree of uh, B? Four. Five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Loops con uh, contribute twice. Yeah, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Four got six. And then what's the neighborhood of B? Huh? A, C, B, D. Any more? E, I okay. guess. Okay, that's all. So what's the cardinality of uh, neighborhood for B? Five, which is less than or equal to degree of B. Okay. So your neighborhood is always less than or equal to the degree of the perfect. Okay. Because sometimes you will have a loop. And then you won't count the B twice. Because the set containing 2B is equal to the set containing 1B. Yeah. And then, yeah, why what? Huh. Oh, I mean, it is clear, right? So I said that you need to look at it locally. So locally, what you can see is only here. Okay, so how many lines come out from B? How many lines come out from B? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, 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 no. Look at this small neighborhood only. Okay. So you cut here. So your mind only have this thing. So how many lines come out from here? Ah, you are like an end. You cannot see where's the the you 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 are not yeah you are not looking from sky you know yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is the yeah. That's why I say locally you need to stand there. Okay. okay. Uh what's next? Uh okay, next. So there's some surprising I'm not sure it's surprising or not. Theorem, but I won't prove it. <laughs> uh Handshaking theorem. So handshaking means you have two hands and then you shake with a different vertex. Okay? You pull out your two hands and then shake. So let's have a, let's start with an undirected graph again. And then with M edges. Then the result is if you sum up all the degree of your vertex, right? It is an even number, which is when two times your edges is the sum of your degree. Okay. We won't prove it. You can see it if you want in the uh, you want me to convince you or not? Ah uh, yes. Uh. I just use example. Uh. But of course, example cannot prove anything, but at least this one has to be true, right? For something. So let's say, okay, we want to sum all the degree and then it's two times M. Okay, so let's try G. Okay, let's just try on G. So what is 2M in this case? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So two times nine is 18. Okay, next you want to sum all the 
degree of V. Okay. So what's the degree of A? Degree of A is what? Two. Degree of B is what? Four. Degree of C is what? Degree of D is what? Degree of E is what? Degree of F is what? Degree of G is what? Zero. So what is two plus four plus four plus one plus three plus four? Huh? Huh? 18. Uh? 18. So they are equal. Okay. So you need to prove for general case. Why is it true? Okay. I don't want to show you H, uh, you can try yourself. But the next one, I think is more shocking than this one. So at least for me, uh, because you combine two opposite things. So the next one is an undirected graph would has an even number of vertexes of odd degree okay ah so when you count all the odd degree vertex they have to be even one okay this one i can show you yeah okay so let's say h here h here i just pick h and c so which one is uh, odd which vertex is odd c is odd b is even D is D or one, two, three, four, five or D is one, two, three, four, five, six, even. A is one, two, three, four, uh, or even again. So how many odd? Two odd, which is even. Okay. Very odd, very good. So <laughs> how about G? Which one is uh, odd? D is odd. Okay, G is even, zero is even, E is odd, and then C is even, B is even, F is even, A is even. So there's still even number of odd. Okay, but this one, this theorem is easy to see if you want to. Huh? No other example. No counter example because I can, I mean, yeah, can can be proven. No counter example can be proven. Can be proven. And then this proof is not hard. Yeah. Yeah, this proof is not hard. Nothing tricky. You can read it. But the proof is not useful for this, uh, the rest. So I don't think I want to do it. Unless you are interested. Why am I writing here? Okay. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, no. Okay. Oh, you want to see the proof? You want to see the proof? Uh, huh? yeah. Why I keep discussing? You want to see the proof? Uh? Prove this one, huh? Okay, let's prove it. I think only three line or one line proof. Huh? Handshake, ah? Uh. Handshake a bit more involved next time. Uh. Handshake. Yeah, handshake a bit more info, but not too hard. But okay, okay. I don't, I don't want to put about handshake because something you need to think about. But for this one, it's easier to think. It's just plus and minus thing. So because by handshake, right? By handshaking theorem, you know that the sum of degree of vertex is an even number okay 
Now what you can do is you split your degree of vertex into odd and even degree. Yeah. So how should I write it? So degree odd plus uh, degree even. You get what I mean? So if odd one, I put one side. Even one, I put one side. Okay. So if you take an even number, take away an, another even number, what do you get? Still an even number. So the total degree of your odd number is even. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's all. That's all for this one. Okay. Even minus even is even, so the leftover one is still even. Okay, so you cannot find counter example. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, you cannot find counter example. Okay. <clears throat> so next. Uh. Okay. So we can if if there's direction on the uh, vertex uh, edges, then you can further split your degree. So we write. Uh, how should we write in a in a directed graph the graph the uh, in degree okay, in degree of a vertex of a vertex v denoted by degree minus v okay is the Number of edges with V as the terminal. Okay, come in. Water come in, right? So terminal. Okay. And uh, the out degree is degree of a uh, vertex V is denoted by degree plus V. And then with the number of edges as the initial vertex. Okay. Want to see example or you're happy with the definition? Ah, example again. Can I understand? Okay. Still can't picture what people are telling you, the stuff people are telling. Okay. So let's say u and v. So I got direction like this. Okay. So what's the degree minus of v? That's mean uh, the arrow ends at v. Okay. As the terminal one is 2. Okay. And how about degree plus v is 1? Because only one arrow as the initial vertex. Okay. Plus going out, minus going. Uh, should we okay last last three slide we, we do one exercise first and then we go to break because just now we start late so let me bring this two thing then okay before do some exercise before we go to break so I didn't copy. Okay, good. This two. Mm. Okay. So, uh, okay, we have few types of graph. Okay, one is called complete graph. So, given n vertexes, you join all the pairs of vertexes. Okay. So you can see that this um graph have some symmetry. Uh, either it's reflection across one axis. Okay, or multiple axes, right? Or you can rotate it. Okay, you should still get back the rotate 90 degree or 60 degree, depending on the graph. You still get back your original graph. Okay. And then a cycle. A cycle is like going like this, right? So if you label your vertex one to n, and then you join the adjacent vertex, and then you will get the cycle. 
Okay, and then uh, the last one is you join back to V1. Okay, so you join V1. So let me write up. So V1, V2, V3, and then you join the last one to the first one. Then you will get a cycle. That's, next one is wheel. So wheel is like a tire, car tires. Okay, so you have a cycle and then put a dot in the middle. Okay, put an extra vertex in the middle and then you join this vertex to other vertex and then you will get the wheels. Okay. And then next is a cube. Okay, this one you probably should listen a bit because I want you to do some exercise. So, n dimensional cubes. If it is one dimensional, it's a line. Two dimensional is a square. Three dimensional is a cube. So how do you form this cube? So you can. It turns out that you can systematic systematically form the cube. So for uh, example, what's a line? A line is a dot, is a two zero dimensional vertex joined together. So this is a line. So what's a square? So a square is two one dimensional uh, line joined together. Okay, so in this case, we will label the first line as 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and the second line as 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so that we know that they come from different lines. Okay, this is square. How about cube? You also can do the same thing. So you create another square. Okay, so same square. But you label the first one as 0. 0, 0, 0, and the second one is 1, 1, 1, 1. And then you join the corresponding uh, vertex where the last n minus 1 string is the same. You see, I join 1, 0 to 1, 0, 0, 0 to 0, 0, 0, 1 to 0, 1, and 1, 1 to 1, 1. Okay? Everyone get, get this rule? Get this rule? So try figure out what is four dimensional cube. Try draw four dimensional cube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try draw try draw this four dimensional cube. Try. try try try. I give you two minutes. Try draw. Draw four dimensional cube. Draw. Draw two four dimensional cube. Yeah. Four dimensional cube. Yeah, try, try, grow, grow. Use the same recipe and grow it. Hey, Guichi, how you found the room in the end? I asked them to put inside your guys' group chat. Just now. No one put in the group chat. So how you found the room just now? Huh? Huh? How you found? I just see your message. You just walk around? Okay, okay. Okay, okay. I asked them to put inside your group chat. You guys got group chat, right? SWE. I don't know whether they have from Okay. Anyone got the four dimensional cube already? Yeah. Huh? Does anyone got it? No? 
So, no one got it? You guys got the highest average, and I cannot come up with one for the average. Uh, you want to draw here again? Okay, you can draw again. Yeah, I draw one here. Maybe it's So maybe use uh use use another type or use rash oops or use something like uh, use something like something like yes. Okay, can everyone see this uh, four dimensional cube? Can see this? Can see a cube? Yeah, this is the four dimensional cube in three dimensional, or maybe in two dimensional. <laughs> four dimensional cube in two dimensional. Huh? Draw five. Yeah. yeah, you can draw. Try drawing a five one. <laughs> yeah, try draw a five one. Yeah. So if you go uh YouTube right, I think they got this uh, animation for this cube that the cube can grow big to the outside and then keep evolving because this is a three dimensional model. So four dimensional cube. Okay. So let's stop here first for break and then we come back at 339. Uh. Okay, I'm going to do it. Okay. Okay. The whole 然后那这个哪一个那那这样的话那那不是这三个都是统一的一个人什么意思听不懂你你你不是说这三个按一个人是 哦，你要知道是，对，它是一个几何，relation，也是一个几何，relation，但是equivalent，它需要知道谁和谁是related嘛，对不对？但是你要知道什么，你就需要equivalent，呃，equivalent，relation，告诉你谁和谁是一样，
对，有关系。比如说，二和三是 related， 它才可以活在这个 set 里面，对不对？三和四是 related， 那他们才会活在同一个 set。但是，一和二不 related， 因为他们活在不一样的 set。哦，那那这个是什么意思？这个，这个，嗯，这个，不是，不是要为了证明那个，不，这个不是要证明，就是加起来是一个。就是所有的 partition 合起来是那个，来这个喽，合起来是这个。哦，对，是要证明这个，然后要用那个，呃，要找他们的那个，呃，这是这，哪一个？从 equivalence r e l a t i o n 对，这一个是从 partition 去到 equivalence equivalence 呀。嗯，好好，嗯。对，这是 partition， 给你 partition， OK， 你知道它是 partition 了，你知道那个什么 union， 嗯，是整个 set， 你也知道他们的 intersection 是零了，然后你要 build 这个 equivalence relation， 或者 equivalence， 他说一样哦，因为你只要有 equivalence relation 就 equivalence， 对吗？那那不，那是他每每一个 part 都有一个。特别的 relation 什么意思？就就是这里面满足的，就是二和三的 relation 和一和一的 relation 不一样。嗯，没有，我们不不 care 不 care 不 care 什么 relation， 他们只要有关系就可以，我们不 care 那个 relation 是怎样。啊？对，我们不管的。那那那几个的 relation 是？我们只知道，我们只知道的东西是一和一有关系。二和三有关系，三和四有关系，四和二有关系，四和三有关系。我只知道这样吧，我不知道他们之间什么关系。但我知道他们有关系，然后我知道一和二没关系，一和三也没关系，一和四也没关系，因为他活在不一样的一个空间。我只知道这样。但是一的关系和他们是没有关系，一是不一样的，一是没有关系，不一样的关系和没有关系是不一样的东西，你知道吗？没有关系。和不一样的关系是，不是同一个东西，对吗？我、哦、问你是不是？哦、是不是、嗯？所以现在我只知道它有没有关系，我不知道什么关系。嗯、OK，、哦、可以吗？可以啊。所以它只要不活在同一个 set 里面，它就没有关系。哦、活在同一个 set 里面呢，它就有关系。哦、OK， 就这样。那那底下这个空位，为什么？嗯，干嘛？因为这是我们的目标啊，给我一个 partition， 我要有一个 equivalence， 这是我们的目标。啊，我们的目标。为什么？就我们的目标啊。为什么？我们要说这个呢、啊？这是我要做的事情。不是要证明。对，我要证明。有两句话。我要证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后果。证后然后这个 relation 里面有，这个 relation 里面有这个 A A A I， 对 A I， 然后然后这些 A I， 这些 A I 就是原本的这个 partition， 是不是？所以就用这些 set 当做它的 equivalent class， 对吗？为什么要 equivalent？ 喂喂喂，一个是 relation， 一个是 classes， 两个要分开，一个是 classes， 一个是 relation， 这两个要分开。嗯，那什么叫 equivalent class？ equivalent class 就是如果你是 equivalent class， 如果你想那个 congress mod 器的话，就是说所有和零有关系的东西都活在一个 equivalent class。哦哦哦。嗯嗯，所以 equivalent relation 跟 class 你要分开。啊，行啊。所以意思说，把这个 set。当做 equivalent class， 意思说这里面的东西相互有关系，不一样的就没关系。哦哦哦 ，OK 啊。哦哦哦。啊 ，OK。那这个，那这个，这个是吧？这什么？到到底你要搞这个？什么是 equivalent relation 呢？所以什么？所以问回你，什么叫做 equivalent relation？ 关系啊。啊，什么关系？要符合什么条件？那三个啊，那三个，对吧？那三个，第一个它是 relation 吗？ relation 的话是一个 subset 哦，对不对
binary relation， 你知道吗？对，知道吗？你来过我 office 过？嗯，对。binary relation 是你要说它是一个 subset 咯，第一步哦，第一步 OK， 全部是 subset， 都是长这种 double 的吗？对不对？我在这个世界里面的东西是不是写成 A 多少倍？我不知道这个干什么啊？对呀、啊，要证明这个 equivalence relation 啊，要证明那三个东西，对不对？怎么会有这个、啊？为什么会有一颗问题？ Relation 还是什么？ Relation， Relation。我要证啊，这是我要证的东西。还没有读清楚这一句话。谁谁和谁 Relation？ 哪里哪里有 ？X 线 ，X 线 ，X 线 ，X 线。你想一下，你要什么？这三个是 Equivalence。为什么是？你会随便乱记啊，你会乱的，我跟你说。我现在已经乱了。对，你回去再想一下你要什么先，你再过来找。因为你在这里卡住了，有人还要问。你回去想一下，想一下这句话先，就单单这句话，你先不要想下面干嘛，你就想这句话在干嘛先。你不知道怎么做编辑，但是你要理解这句话先，然后才下去看他做人。OK， 这句话最重要。OK， 帮你分数了。有有有，呃，等一下，哎，有一个瑞成呢，瑞成，你问一下要不要来看？你教一下我给你。瑞成，想看成绩吗？是几号？啊，几号？后面三号，一三三。三，对，差不多，四十四啊，嗯，之后会 scale 啊，再看，对，等一下，什么？拉近下面，还没有，对，谁是你追的？他没有来吗？呃，好的，他不用搞亏损，他没有来，他在那边，所以谁是你朋友 ？O C D 啊，哪一个？所以就会啊 ，O K O K， 你是什么了啊？姓什么？姓什么？你是谁？再告诉你，名字我一直记不住。服务哦，对服务 ，OK，OK， 呀，看到 ，OK， 可以。女朋友是猴子一啊，是。OK， 哪个女的？就是说，真的普通，普通，没有 fail 啦，普通。嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯
快要解释了，好，不要不要缺课，缺课是吧 ？OK， 很快，快点来，什么解释故事？提示，好，没事，可以的。提哈。提哈。对。我再来问。可以，等下再来问。OK。好。Okay. Okay. Last hour before we go into quiz. Last thirty second, thirty minutes. When, when do we start? Yeah. Start of tutorial. Yeah, start of tutorial. We do quiz. Okay, I think we can go quite fast now. Maybe because only one main, only one main idea here. Okay, so. Uh, in this hour, there's only one main idea. Other is uh, repetitive of the usual construction. So this idea is called bipartite. Okay. Okay. So what does it mean by bipartite? Okay. Partite come from partition. Bi is two. What happened? E. What happened? Okay, my schemes go to the left too much, the right too much. Okay, so what is bipartite? Okay, bi is two. Partition, partite come from partition. Okay, so what are partition? So what are so we partition the vertex set. Okay, so if it is ver, so if a simple graph is bipartite, then the vertex sets can Vertex set can be partitioned into two disjoint set. Okay, must be disjoint. And then there's some condition on the edge, okay, such that every edge can only connect one from one group. So the edge can only connect one vertex. A vertex in B1 and a vertex in B2. Okay, so in this case, we will say that in this case we can say that the tuple of set, okay, this is tuple of set, is a by partition of the vertex set. So this is bipartite. So for example, what's an example of bipartite? Oh, too big, no wonder. Okay. So for example, the A2 quiver or A2 graph we draw from the start. So how is it a bipartite? So we can split the vertex into two sets. So V1 on this side, V2 on the other side. And then we check that every edge, okay, in fact, there's only one edge here. Every edge connect one vertex from one group. Okay, so this is my part. Uh, what else? Maybe we can try make it longer. How about this one? Is this a bipartite graph? Huh? Why not? Huh? So you can like split them into two sets. For example, A here. B here and then C on the other side. So A B is connected and B C is connected. Okay, so check that every edge only connect one vertex from each group. Okay. So how about how about the triangle, the cycle? Is this a bipartite? Huh? No, why? A connects back to B. Okay, let's see A, B, C. Okay, so if you put A on one side, C must be on the other side, right? Because every edge must connect different uh, vertex on the other group. And then C have to connect B on the other side. But you always have uh, B connected to A. 
Okay, which is not a lot. Similarly, you can put A, B, C on this side. You can always see that you cannot avoid this kind of application. Okay, but this one is symmetry, so you just need to look at one is the same. Everything is the same. It's the same uh, argument. Okay, and uh, and there's one way. There's one way to check this actually, because if you can imagine if the graph growing a lot, yeah, how how on earth you're going to try all the possibility, right? So there's one way to check it quickly by coloring on the vertex. So there's a theorem. <laughs> so the theorem is a simple graph is bipartite if and only if it is possible to assign one or two different colors to each vertex of the graph so that no two adjacent vertexes have the same color. Okay, so you start with two color, then you color differently whenever you meet an edge. Okay, so let's try. Let's test this theorem first, right? So because you don't believe, right? Let's try. So, for example, I said that this uh, A2 graph or A2 cleaver is bipartite. Okay. So, this means I can label uh, the vertex such that whenever they are connected, they are of different color. So, if U is yellow, I label V as green. Okay. So, it's bipartite. How about how about uh, the next one? I can put A yellow, B green, and then C yellow. Okay, so that's fine. How about the triangle here? If I put A yellow, C have to be green. And then B have to be green as well. But there's no way to put these two as a different color, although they are connected, right? Make sense? Okay, makes sense. Huh? Okay. Yeah. I won't prove this, but uh, you should know how to use this. Okay, let's try on the harder example. Harder example. This one. Put this up. Okay, try on this example. So try use the theorem to prove whether G or B is a bipartite. So let's start from A. Who are connected to A? G. Okay. F. You can see or not? I think we have a B. Huh? C. Yeah, C. And then E. Okay, so next we look at C then. So besides C, have to be different color. So they are on the different color. So that's fine. How about B? Because we B check B already, right? So away from B have to be connected to B have to be different color. So F, E, C. Okay, D. Connected to D, the vertex has to be different. So the neighbor has to be different color. C, G, F, E. Okay. E, the neighbor has to be different color. F, the neighbor has to be different color. And then G, the neighbor has to be different color. Hence, G is E is bipartite. Okay, how about H? So 
Let's say we label A as black. So all the neighbor have to be different color. Okay. But if you look at these two guys here, they are connected and they have the same color. So hash is not bipartite. Hash is not bipartite. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So huh? what? What's the usage of that? Uh? What's the usage of that? What's the usage of that? Uh? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I use a. Uh, I very. I deal less with uh, graph theory. So inside your huh? What inside your textbook they talk about which? How about human resource? Uh, human resource. So how you assign skill with people? Yeah, yeah they use it on that. But I didn't like really experience it. Yeah, human resource. So you assign the person to different skill and then you see which one have the uh overlap skill or less skill, then you can you can pick which one, huh? Put them together. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, yeah. So your book also say matching, matching the uh, couples also used by uh, yeah. Same interest. Same interest, uh, same, yeah. Yeah, also can use for matching couples. Life is always mismatch. Uh, different. So it's like uh, OB. Oh, no, you can like male and female. Yeah, male and female. Okay. Yeah, so example of complete bar type graph will be like KMN. So M con control one side of the number of vertex and then N control the other side. And then you can draw all the possible edges between opposite side. Okay. So you don't join the same side one. Join opposite side. Okay. Only joining opposite side. So this is a complete one. If you join all the possible edges to the opposite. Okay. Okay. One, two, three, four, five six okay about six then we will stop okay so next one is subgraph okay it's like a subset so you learn a set and then you learn a subset because our graph is built out of two data one is vertex set one is edge set so if you look at a subset of your vertex set and your edge set then you will get something called a subgraph okay so subgraph is still a graph, so you need to tell me another two data where the edge set is subset of V and the edge set is a subset of the edge set. Okay. So for example, uh, maybe I just draw this up. So we got the complete graph. Right. What's this complete graph? Okay, so we got D, C, B, E, and A. And then we can look at the subgraph of it. So, for example, we remove the D. Ooh, wait, too many. Oh, okay. Why? Uh? Why is remove so many ones? Okay, never mind. Okay, this is an accident. Then we just use this accident then. Okay, so. So uh, the the K5, so the right one is a subset of the, a subgraph of the, uh, the map, okay? Because the sub, the vertex set is a subset of uh, the vertex, original vertex set, 
and then the edges is the is the subset of the original set. So if they are not equal, then we will call it a proper subgraph. It's like a proper subset. Okay. So a subgraph is a proper subgraph. If if H is not equal to G. Okay. Okay. So I wonder if you have a if a have a how to say. Do you have a feeling to join these two line here? Does anyone have one feeling to join these two? Lines? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 So, so why I so why I why I would like to join these two lines? Because you can think of it like as you take out the A, the E, C, B, A part with them joining. Okay. Okay. So if I join this line, this is what called the induced graph. Okay. So let's see what the induced graph is. And then we will examine it, examine it again. So, so the subgraphs, the subgraph. Induced by a vertex subset. Okay. Subset of the uh, vertex set. B is another graph. Okay. Where the condition on edge set is you have to contain all the edge in the original original graph original graph original graph uh, if and only if you got the vertex in your subset okay So maybe I give you a smaller example, okay? Smaller example. So for example, made longer a bit. So we have this uh, A3 graph, A3 quiver. So U, B, W, okay? So if I draw U, B, W like this, okay? So U, B, W is a, so this is called a tree. It's a sub graph of a tree, but is not induced by u b okay. To be a induced sub graph, sub graph, you need to include all the edges that connects the subset. The vertex subset from the original graph. Okay. So to be an induced graph, you need to include all the edges on the original uh, original graph. So this is a subgraph. Uh, this is an induced. It's an induced subgraph. Uh, uh, it's an induced subgraph. How do you say? Yeah, it's an induced subgraph. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can you find a total number of subgraph? Can you find a total number of subgraph? Yeah, can. 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 Huh? Yeah, subset. Yeah. But you have two things to count now. So you need to count the edge and also count the vertex. So you have more flexibility. You got me. So for example, so for example, in this case, okay, this one, I don't know what notation is this. This one I just invented, okay? Subgraph. I just invented. This this is not standard. I just invent, okay? So because you could have something like this, right? UV. Okay. You also can have something like this. UV. Okay. So yeah. 
So if you change the edge or you change the vertex, then you must get a lot of different uh, different elements. Yeah. Which one? Uh -huh. Yes, yes, correct. Correct. So induced by the vertex. Yeah. So you got a vertex and then you put it back and then see whether how it connects in the original one and then you take it off. Take the sub drop off. Yeah. Based on the vertex. Yes. Okay. So this one is uh, induced by UV. This one is not induce okay see induce induce the subgraph okay hmm. english plus tiny huh yeah uv is just a normal subgraph Yes. Yeah. Is it induced by? By is pay. Right. Pay induced. Okay. If you've got problem with English, then I teach you how to memorize this thing. Huh? Pay, yeah. Uh, pay induced. Okay. Induced by. Okay. Logic is like that. I mean, human logic is not too far different when uh, when they speak a language it's not too far different okay, okay what else in deal subgraph and then this one ah okay next one so set you can if you got two sets then you can take the what Union of two sets. Okay. So what's a union of two graph? So can you guess what's the meaning of union of two graph? Huh? Anyone want to guess? Huh? What's the union of two graph? Is something become bigger, right? Big graph. So how to take the big graph? So first you take the union of vertex set and you take the union of edge set. Okay. So we will denote it as a G1 union G2. Okay, this one I think I need help from the diagram. Let's bring this one up. Okay. So, so let's say you got this G one here. Maybe too small, is it? Okay. So you got this G one, and then you got this G two here. Okay. Both of them has A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. And then the difference is at the E and F. Okay. When you take the union, you will have the E and F. And then the S set, you also combine them. So how you picture this? So you can take this G2, okay, take this G2, stack it on G1. Yeah, yeah, this is the union. This is basically it. Yes. Okay. Stack it on the, or you take G one, stack it on G two. Is the same is symmetric. The operation is symmetric. Okay. Ah, uh, there are two more, two more, two more, three more, three more, three more, three more. Okay. Three more, three more. Okay. Hey, why suddenly come? Three more, huh? three more, three more, three more, then we will end this marathon. Oh. Bye.
by LJ. Okay. Uh, she is from the DMT, the Tuesday course. And then she took quizzes on my Wednesday course, and then she came for the lecture, new lecture this today. So she already took the quiz yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> what? Hey, she performed in the, what's that? The music, musical night. There, the, 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 the concert, concert by the musical club. Huh? Very club. Very club. Okay. So next, uh, we will define something called the adjacent C matrix. Okay. So remember, just now we talked about the adjacent, adjacent uh, vertexes, and uh, incidence, incidence edges. Okay. So let's say we can label our vertex as V one up to V n. Okay. We want to turn picture, turn graph into matrix. Okay, you don't want to look at graph anymore. Okay, computer cannot draw graph one. Computer, you need to tell number. Okay, so you draw this matrix. So this is the uh, adjacent. C. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the. <laughs> okay, this is the last three slide. Huh? After this, then we will uh, end the uh, lecture. Already. So <laughs> the adjacent C matrix of G is the uh, n by n matrix only contains 0 and 1. Remember the Boolean matrix. So this one also 0, 1 matrix, OK? Such that, so let me label this uh, matrix entry, such that ai j equals to 1 if uh, there's an edge between them. Or and zero otherwise. Okay. So for example, very quick. So just now we got this uh, A2 quiver again. We got a running example here. So maybe put V1, V2 more related. So we got a V1, V2, V1, V2 matrix. Is V1 connected to V1? No. So I put zero. Is V1 connected to V2? Yes. Is V2 connected to V1? Yes. Is V2 connected to V2? No. no. Okay. That's all. Okay. So maybe look at uh, some example and then I want to see, I want you to see the symmetry here. Okay. There's a lot of symmetry. I only like symmetry stuff. Okay. So for example, this one, you got A, B, C, D. Okay. So A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. If they are connected, you put a 1. Connected, put a 1. Connected, put a 1. Connected, put a 1. OK. So you can see that uh, this, this matrix here, right? They're actually symmetric, meaning if you transpose them, A, T is equal to A. Yeah, so you transpose them, you get back your original matrix. Huh? Uh, what if there is a loop? Okay, if there's a loop there, mm, a, um, okay, so this question here, right, they don't define for loops. Okay, this is just simple graph. But I guess if you want to have loops, you can just put one maybe. I mean, I, I think different from, uh, how was that? Different on your purpose, maybe some, uh, in some of my research, we will put two here, but yeah, depend. But if you want to put one, also can. But but any case, we haven't defined for loops yet because this is a simple one. Okay, so you can adjust. You can adjust your uh, adjust your definition to fit your fit what you want. Okay. So you will so so for now you only can see zero because we we are dealing with a simple graph. And then you can see that if you transpose the matrix, you will always get back the same matrix. Okay, this is not a coincidence, right? Do you know why? 
it is symmetric across the refraction axis. Huh? Do you know why? Do you know why is it symmetric? Why the matrix is uh, AT equals DN? Huh? Like, the, the yeah, and then? Yeah, because whenever you have an edge from A to B, you must have an edge from B to A. Yeah, so that's why you got this symmetry. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. Last two, last two, last two. Last two, last two. It's not last three, eh? Oh, no, I don't mean slide, I mean uh, definition. Okay. <laughs> My math's not good. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's two definitions. I... <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let G be an undirected graph. Okay, suppose we can label our vertex from one to n. Okay. One to n. And then we can label our edge from one to m, okay, different number. Uh, the edges, huh? Oh, g, huh? What did I wrote? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, then we will define another matrix, incidence matrix. So, for m. J is uh, M I J equal to one, okay, when uh, H E I is incident with B I and zero otherwise E J or E I E I or E J E J E J and B I, okay. So why why is why is this? So let's uh, look at the running example again for the A two river. So I put it V one, V two, and E one. So E one were on the column, and then V one, V two were on the row. So E one is incident to V one or not? Yes, because connected. Is E one connected to V two? Yes. So. This is the incidence matrix for the A2. Okay. And then, uh, and then, okay. Let's see this uh, example. Last two, uh. yes, last two, last two, uh, last two. I cannot extend the no, last two. It's so good. It's so Okay. Last two, ah. Uh. Really last two already. Oh shit. Oh man, nothing. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. I... <laughs> okay. Okay, I move this out, then I can add one more butter. Okay. So okay, let's stop. Okay. So you put your vertex on the row, edges on the column. Okay. When E1 is incident to V1 and V4, then you put a 1. And then E2, you put a 1. So you can see that on all the columns, there's at most two non zero terms. Okay, at most two. Why at most two? Sometimes you've got loops. Okay, so this definition is undirected graph. So include, include loops. So if there's a loop on V1, so E1 only connects V1. So you only got one at V and then zero at the other. Okay. So it's at most at most one. Uh at most two non-zero uh, terms on the column. Okay. Because one edge cannot connect three vertex, right? Yeah, only connects two and most. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you think this one is easy, eh? you should go into your mind. Otherwise, next time you still forget one. Okay, last, 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 last. Last, last, last two, last two, uh, last two. 
Last two, last two, last two. Okay, okay. <laughs> Not really. I mean, last, last definition, last definition, last definition. Okay, okay, last definition. Last definition. <laughs> this is like my mother, uh, always cheat me or something like that. Uh. <laughs> last, 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 last. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, the last one is uh, we want to talk about when are uh, two graphs are the same, right? We always want to see what two things are the same. Okay, how to talk about two graphs are the same. So you need to have a bijection between your x, x set, okay, from B1 to B2, such that if uh, A, B are connected in G1, if and only if B, F, A, F, B are connected in G2 for every A, B in G1. Okay? And then this thing is what we call the isomorphism. Oh, this one is a higher level of equality. Okay, this one is always I talk about this isomorphism. Last time I talked about the Z mod 2Z thing is also this kind of isomorphism. Like this equality is more involved because it is not just bijection between two objects, but there's more properties you want to preserve. Okay, for now, you need to preserve the connectivity. Okay, if A, B is connected, then after you check the next one, they have to be connected as well. Okay, I'll let you see the example, then you will know. So, for example, just now, just now what we did, huh? Okay, actually just now we didn't did anything. <laughs> <laughs> because I thought that would be too fast, too slow. Okay, maybe i let you think. Is this bipartite or not? Is this bipartite? Is this bipartite? Because you can label with different colors. Okay. So actually, this coloring here tells you how to bipartition your vertex set. Okay. So what you do is you put V1, V2 here, and then you put the one with same color on the one side. Okay. And then you join it uh, as well. You join before U1 is U2, U1 go to U3, U4 go to U2, and then U4 go to U3. Okay. So this is the bike addition. But we can see that these uh, two graph is isomorphic. Okay. Isomorphic. So to say that they are isomorphic, you need to give me a bijection. Okay. So by the bijection between what? Between the H set. Okay. Let me call this a different name then. Call it a V1, V2, V3, V4. Okay. So what's the bijection here? So U1 go to V1, U2. Go to where B2, U3, go to be careful. U3, go to B3, huh? Yeah. Huh? You what you mean you want to name this? Like this? Same, 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 same thing, the same thing. Okay, and then, hey, wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay, and then, okay, maybe maybe I do this more apparent. Okay, I do this. So V three have to send to V four. Huh? Yes. Okay, and then V four send to that one is just numbering. But this one, I think I will let you see the operation more clearer. Okay. So first of all, you need to tell me whether this one is a bijection or not. You will already learn right one to one and on two. Okay, is it on two? Everything in the core domain 
got a image, right? Got a pre image, I mean. Yeah. And then is it one to one? If different UI sent to different VI. Okay, so this is an bijection. The second, we need to check if they are connected before, then they have to be connected afterwards. So, for example, if U1 and U2, is U1 and U2 connected? Yes. This means V1 and V2 has to be connected. Okay. If U1 and U3 are connected, is V1 and V4 connected? Yes. If U2 and U4 connected, is V2, V3 connected? Yes. If U3 and U4 connected, is V3 and V4 connected? Yes. Okay. So this is we call the graph isomorphism. Okay. So what is graph isomorphism really did here? So you can see that U3 and U4 swap, right? So you can imagine you take this one, take it out, and then you turn it, twist it, then you will get this graph. Okay. So this is the isomorphism. You take this tool and then you twist it. Can you imagine? Can you picture? Can you picture? Yeah. Take this and then twist it. Okay. So without changing the structure of your graph. Okay. Any question? We'll stop here. Any question? Question? No question? Okay, let's take a break, 10 minutes, uh, refresh yourself, and then we will come back for a quiz. And I forget to let you sign, right? Hmm. Uh, Okay。<笑> 这个笔头应该要换挑战很不用 
。像如果你说 subset of t a 的话，是不是二 to the power 三 ？subset of t a 的话是二 to the power 二，对不对？但是那总共起来是多少呢？你看，有点 counting 的方算法的。你明白我讲？可以吧？可以可以用乘啊？可以用乘？可以用什么？乘乘？可以用乘啊？所以我不确定可不可以用乘哦。我要查，要要要要那个，要算一下，因为因为好奇这个。对，因为因为那你就是你可以好奇，那你你就我们有 M P 过这个有。就是没有没有点哦，没有来。那你没有点的时候啊，这样你就没有跟着就没有线了，不可能有线没有点的，明白吗？所以它有一点 restrictive， 你也不好像也不可以一起乘，因为因为你 f 的时候你就没有四个东西装在那边，你你这四个变成一个东西啊，你看就一个可能性的，明白吗？然后比如说点点也不可能可以放什么线，所以这三个又变成一个可能性了。没有，只有这个的时候就会有两个可能性哦。这个一的有限，一的没有限，两个可能性哦。但是这两个点有三个可能性吗？对不对？是不是？因为你可以是这两个点，这两个点，这两个点。两边是这样。然后又有三个的话，就一个可能性，然后。你可以没有线，可以一个有线，一个有线，一个没有线，所以一二三四，所以有四，所以总共加起来是四五六七八九十十一十二三十，算十四个，算的，两还要算几个？算的 ，number of 算的。这个要算？他想算。考试考？还有没有？就考试的，知道？知道。这个答案。这经常不知道哎，选择又不知道，差了，这一秒知道，下一秒不知道。嗯嗯，这个什么？嗯，经常不知道，选择经常不知道。知道你要反正两个。这贵，这贵那个算是。算是。圈算两圈。圈算两个啊？你贵是有多少线出来？呃，那那那个三，那个公式。是二 m 等于那个啊？干嘛干嘛？那个那个算的是什么东西啊？就是说，如果你把每一个点，每一个点，啊、这个是全全部的对，点加起来的，全部点的 degree 加起来，然后一个点出去多少线？啊，对，然后全部全部加在一起。然后这个 m 是线 ，m 是总共之线，总共的 a a a 值。对。那那个呃。呃 ，loop 算是 ，loop 为什么要算？ loop 算一个，它在什么 loop 算什么要算两个？如果在底部的算两个，为什么？因因为它它只只因为你看出来，对，它那个线它刚才讲，对，因为你对它问的，你只看这个，看这个，把这边放大来看。不不听课了，不听课了，好了。所以这个选选择性的不会是 simple graph 还是？当然跟。Yeah. Yeah. 这个这个东西都会看成是两个，然后没没没没没有方向的。Director 的话，我们不是有分加跟减吗？看你是看 degree 或者 degree 减或者 degree 加吗 ？Director 的话。director 的话，但是如果 loop 那就 loop 就是你看一个出一个一个加一个减，一个加一个加一个，呀呀呀，加一个加一个，加一去呀，那个二就分成两个部分吗？加两个方向，对吧？减是出，啊，然后加是减，我加是出，加是出，加是出，对啊，就一二三四五。Director graph， 但是这边没有 direction 吗？他如果还有 direction， 啊，你都听了，我都听了，好好好，我开始听了，没有问题啊，顶不住 ，OK， 别说，几分我真顶不住 ，OK， 你看，你看，你看这个，你看这个，你看，这个这个 ，so degree of b 等于三，等于 degree 减加 degree 加，压力吗？对吗？如果他们 degree 加起来，就是你没有算。方向的时候的底，如果你可以吗？可以，做不可以，我来问，做不可以，做不可以，怎么？做不可以，做不可以，我讲过了。
degree of visa connect to H the Neighbor 但是我不知道 他是从铜铜<笑> 这样写是不重要的
Please don't help your friend to sign up because I need to know I need to contact for the next term so please. We'll wait Zheng Quan come back first before we start. Okay. Uh. Hello, hello. Okay, as usual, so now we got three rows. Okay. I want the first person to count how many uh students your row and then count that your yeah, I you. Okay, once you get the tutorial question, you can read, but don't start first. I need to brief you before you start. Don't start first. You can read, but don't start. Uh, keep all your entry devices face down, all your handphone or iPad face down. Uh, you can read, but don't start yet. Okay. Hopefully, it's enough. Uh. Hopefully. Hey, no, no, count first, count first, count, count first. Count if you get, you have get 20. Count, count first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hey, please uh, don't start here. Uh. Read first. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Don't start first. Don't start first. I need to explain. I need to explain. Don't start first. Okay, don't start first. Uh, you can read. Don't start first. I want to explain this, uh, how you read this space. Don't start first. You can read. You can read the quiz first. Don't start. I need to bring you how to answer this question. Don't start. Don't start. I want to explain. That's right. Don't stop. Okay, this place. Oh, okay. Everyone got the place yet? Not yet. Everyone got. Okay. So for this place, you don't need to press calculator. You just need to write how you find the combination. Show me the test, no need to press calculator, so you don't need to use calculator, and then no need to use formula to compute the combination or calculation. You just need to show me how you count the calculation. And then, question one, we got bonus question here, or so I give you bonus six, you whether you can get it or not. But total mark won't exist 10. The total mark won't exist 10. So, one to so one point one to one point three is five mark, and then the other side is also five mark. So the open ended question two point two, you just need to answer one of the so is human relationship symmetric, or is human relationship symmetric, or is human relationship symmetric. So just pick one yes or no, and then expect one selected, and then you need to convince me using one to get the mark. 
just one candle. Yeah, don't write a whole candle. Okay, long question. Long question. Okay, don't start first. Ah, don't start yet. Ah, don't start yet. Ah, all correct. Listen to what he said. Ah, it all correct. Yeah. So no, I mean total work and zip ten. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can't use formula. Can't use formula. Yeah. Yeah. No need to use formula. You just tell me. You just tell me. You just tell me to uh how you. How you? I mean formula. I mean formula for combination, meaning the factorial thing. No need to count the number. I don't need to to give me the big number. Okay. You just need to tell me how to count. Yes. Okay. How to choose? What to choose? to okay okay so no question so uh, we will start now we will stop at 4 53 20 minutes
अच्छा
Just more time. That's it. Okay, five more minutes. Um, one more minute you should clean up your solution, write down your name and give it a name, your English name. If you have tried to cut down your English name with student ID,
Pass to the front now. Pass to the front. Hey, before you leave, uh, let's take a group photo first. Take a group photo before we leave, okay? Huh? As a six hour marathon memory. <laughs> then before you leave, let's take a group photo before we leave. Ah, very fast one, very fast one. Okay, you type for talking Ah, before you leave, we take a group photo before you leave, ah. Hey, not big enough, or not big enough. Voting pro D got big enough, or not? D big enough, or not? Not big enough, or Hey, before you leave, uh, let's take a group photo before you leave. Hey, can, 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 this one, can. Can, uh. Hey, before you leave, we take a group photo before you leave. Can I this one, this one? Okay.